Hey there, race fans. It's Race Day Top 5 with me, Frank Five. Las Vegas Motor Speedway, where everyone's got to push their chips to the front of the table if they want to go all in and hit the jackpot. And this weekend, one team hit the jackpot massively with three of their drivers being up front and dominant for the majority of the race. Let's get to all that went down in Sin City. Number one, William Byron, Willie B as they like to call him, hits the jackpot by getting his first win of the season, winning Sunday's Pennzoil 400 at Las Vegas Motor Speedway, holding off teammates Kyle Larson and Alex Bowman, Bubba Wallace, and Christopher Bell for the victory. William Byron, the entire race, dominant. That's all you got to say about his car. It was just dominant. Started outside Paul Joey Logano, and after 10 laps in the race, he took the lead from Logano and just drove away for the rest of that stage. That car was so, so strong. I haven't seen a car this dominant in Vegas in a long time, in quite some time, especially since we introduced the next-gen car. Even the times when we had the, the Gen 6 car and we had the 550 package, there was, I can't really remember a true dominant race car at Las Vegas. Maybe Kevin Harvick in 2018, but William Byron yesterday was just so dominant. The only car that kept up with him at times was, of course, teammate Kyle Larson. There was speed in both of those cars, but Byron was so dominant. He captured stage one. He captured stage two. It just looked like he was prepare to run away with the entire thing well then come start of stage three after everyone makes their pit stops he slips back to fourth after coming off a of pit road at the start of the stage he kind of hangs around the top five six but can't really go anywhere because there's like a big difference when your car is up front versus where it's behind in the middle of the pack it took him a while but he got his way back up to second place and it looked like he was going to finish there because he was quite a ways behind kyle larson when we got into a long green flag one after a caution flag came out for joey logano hitting the wall at the first couple laps of the final stage it looked like byron was content to run with second place but a caution came out when eric Almarola got loose and hit the wall in turn four trying to pass a slower car and that brought everyone to pit road everyone in the top five and six pretty much came down and changed two tires and i'm thinking okay well if everyone takes two tires there's a chance that they're gonna be up front and nobody can overhaul them on four tires that quickly the only car that stayed out was Martin Truex Jr. He didn't pit while everyone else did. And Byron beat Kyle Larson off pit road, which I thought was key. Because I for sure thought when whatever lane Truex pits, Byron is going to pick the opposite lane. He's going to restart on the outside, which put Kyle Larson in the um, unfortunate position being behind a car staying out on older tires. And Byron got a good restart when they took the green flag for green-white checker. He took the lead on the outside of Truex and ran away with the thing and was able to bring it home in first place ahead of his two teammates. It was just a good win, not just for William Byron, but for the whole team. They have had good cars at the start of the season, but unfortunately they haven't had the luck. They, once again, were involved in a wreck late in the Daytona 500, a race he still hasn't really been able to get a good finish out of. And last week, he was top 10 early on, slipped back to the top 12, and then had to pit during the final round of Green Flag pit stops again because of, I think, a loose wheel. And unfortunately, it took him out of contention for a good finish. This weekend, they were able to put it together, and it was just a great win for him and Rudy Fugel. It's only Byron's fifth career win. He's been in the sports since 2018, but there have been times where he's not been consistent. Last year, he had perhaps one of his best years where he got two wins, but there were times that where he was not really running up to par like his teammates were at the time they were able to make the playoffs they got eliminated in the round of 12 and they were hoping you know hoping for bigger things this year the start got off to a slow start with the first two races but yesterday they were able to get a big big win and i a feeling that william byron is going to be continuing to run up front and battling for more wins this year especially after yesterday's performance just a tip of the hat to him in that 2014 what a dominant car that they had yesterday Number two, HMS, one, two, three. While Byron was celebrating, his two of his other three teammates were behind him in second and third. Kyle Larson, I mentioned, kept up with William Byron for a lot of the race and at times felt like he could have had the car to beat if he got in front and got the clean air. After we took a restart with 70 plus laps to go, he was passing Denny Hamlin for the lead who took two tires and Larson started to pretty much drive away for the most part. It looks like he was going to win at the track that he got his first win in his return to the sport two years ago. And of course, he wanted to win the championship that year. But as I mentioned, the late race caution came out. Larson came down pit road. And he admitted that he, they were a little bit slow in their stop. But when I look back at the replay, I don't really see anything wrong with what they had with their stop. And I don't see where they were slow. Maybe they were, you know, you know, just, you know, just like a millisecond of 
a fast a, a slower stop versus a faster stop or the 24 team just beat him off the pits fair and square larson came off the pit second and unfortunately had to restart behind martin shurex jr on the older tires but i felt like he wasn't gonna get, a good, gonna get a good restart, but he did. Unfortunately, the bottom line kind of stalled out a bit by the time they got to turn one, and that's where Byron got the run he needed to get the victory, and Larson had to settle, unfortunately, for second place. He felt, he said, it sucks to come up short, but at the same time, nonetheless, it was a great run for the five team. Like, the 24 team, they needed this run because they haven't had a top 10 the first two races. They nearly won the Daytona 500 till they were caught up in that wreck on the last lap in turn one. They had a good car, I felt like, last weekend, but we'll never know because on lap 12, he had an electrical problem and had to come down pit road and had to go to the garage, staying there for a couple laps. But when they got back out there, the car was running around the guys in the top 10, top 15, despite being many laps down. What could have been? This weekend, they were able to put together a good, solid race and get a really good finish out of it. So Larson's going to get to victory lane eventually. And then Alex Bowman. What a start he's having to his with his first year crew chief, Blake Harris. He's done a great job for the team. Fifth in the Daytona 500, top 10 last weekend. And yesterday, they put come home with the final spot on the podium. They weren't really good at the beginning. They were hovering around the top 15. But by the time stage two started, they got themselves together. And they started to work their way to the front, into the top 10, and into the top five by the end of that stage. And at the final stage, I saw him getting up front. And he led a couple laps. I'm thinking... Boy, he might have something because, remember, he's a defending winner of this race. And I felt like he could have something for his teammates. Well, unfortunately, he got kicked back a little bit and looked like he was going to have to settle for fourth, fifth place finish. And, of course, the late race caution comes out. He follows his teammates past those Toyotas, and they're able to make it a one, two, three finish. And that was a pretty good result for Alex Bowen. No, really good result. They're having a great start. This is the best start to Alex Bowen's Cup career that I can remember since he joined Hendrick Motorsports. This guy and Blake Harris, we got to give him props too. They're having a great chemistry together right now. They're doing a great job, and I feel like it's only going to get better from here, and they'll eventually get themselves into victory lane. So it was just a really good weekend for those three Hendrick cars in the top three yesterday. Number three, Bubba with a top five. Bubba Walls finished in fourth place. Now, do you all remember the last time we were here? In the fall, he got hit in the outside wall when Kyle Larson got loose on the inside. And he, I don't know what went on in his head for him to flip the switch, but he just turned down and took out Larson in retaliation when, in general, Larson didn't do anything wrong. He got loose. Bubba retaliated for no reason, took them both out, and afterwards he proceeded to climb out of the car and start throwing punches at Kyle Larson when Larson was not at fault here. It was an accident. It was a mistake. Bubba overreacted, and that got him a one-race suspension. I felt like he was coming into this race determined to put that aside and put together a good result. And they needed it because the first two races, they hadn't finished the race. They crashed out in the last lap of the 500. They blew up late in the race last week at Fontana. They needed a good result to get things going for them. And they did yesterday. They ran top 10 pretty much the entire race. They had good speed, I think, on the short runs. Long runs were not their best friend, even though they were able to keep their track position. It wasn't enough for them to kind of get up there and race with the top dogs. But nonetheless, they were able to put together a good run and they got themselves a good restart in that green white checker to get up to fourth place and this is good for the team because both of their cars including tyler reddick were not able to finish the first two races reddick did finish yesterday with the top 15 and bubba really needed this as well but i'm not surprised that he kind of ran well at this track because it's a little similar to kansas and if you all remember what happened to him in the fall race at kansas last year he won this track's very similar to it where you can run bottom middle groove any type of um racing line on the racetrack and Bubba was able to put together a good performance yesterday so kudos to him and Booty Barker and that 23 team for getting a good result and maybe they can put together some good results after this and maybe get themselves to victory line and put themselves in the playoffs for the first time in his tenure at 2311 racing number four Gibbs Toyotas fall short yesterday it looked like at times Denny Hamlin had something for those Hendrick cars he just kind of played second fiddle for them for the most part and the final stage, they took a gamble after the pit stop for caution from the Joey Logano's crash. He took two tires and ran up at the front on the restart. And he stayed there for a while. And I'm thinking, okay, the two-tire gamble could pay off for, you know, running in the top three. He lost the lead to Kyle Larson. He slipped back a little bit. But then pit stops happened under green flag. He was able to stay in the top five. Then that caution came out. And on the restart, he went from six all the way back to 11th spot. Yikes. That's not indicative of how they ran. They were one of the best Toyotas yesterday, if not at times the best Toyota, especially in that last stage. 
And then his teammate, Martin Trex Jr., who also kind of needed some good luck to go for him. He nearly got a top 10 last week after coming back from a two-lap penalty for a loose wheel. He put together a great performance yesterday, running top 10 the entire day. And, of course, at the end, he took a gamble. James Small, I think, kind of played a part in this to keep Truex out there on the racetrack for the final racer thinking we could get ourselves a win or if not we're going to get a top five out of it well they lost the lead after they got passed by William Byron in three and four when Byron got the big run Truex slipped back and he slipped back all the way to a seventh place finish it is his first top 10 of the season though and it's a good result but I feel like there's something that that's keeping the Toyotas from getting to those Hendrick cars they kind of mid post-race we're a little behind those Hendra cars and those Chevys. We've got to get some work done. We have a ways to go. But nonetheless, they did show speed yesterday. Just wasn't enough for those Hendra cars. But nonetheless, Truex put together a good result. Hamlin had a chance for a good finish. Unfortunately, the last three star kind of killed him. And number five, Hendrick celebrating, but one of their drivers was not in the car this weekend. And it happens to be the sport's most popular driver. On Friday, Chase Elliott, driver of the number nine, the 2020 NASCAR Cup champion and the sport's most popular driver, was snowboarding in Colorado when he injured his leg while on the slopes, and it turned out to be a fractured left tibia injury. That was the diagnosis. He did have a three-hour successful surgery on Friday and was released from the hospital and got to go back home for the weekend. Unfortunately, it meant that he would not be able to participate in in the cup event on Sunday and unfortunately he's going to be out for quite a while we don't know when Paul Andrews the um jo uh, the executive came out and said we do not know how long it's going to be until Chase gets back in the race car I mean it, it, I, I was really shocked about this like I was just relaxing on Friday and then I got this tweet and I said Chase Elliott out Sunday with a leg injury and I'm like oh my goodness gracious I can't believe that happened and it's not good for the sport when the sport's most popular driver, who he may not have a big type personality, but he's still well-rounded and well-liked by the fans and has been very successful since he came into the sport. Uh, just have him not in the race car kind of hurts not only just you know NASCAR, but it kind of hurts the ratings as well, especially on television, because you want to see the sport's most popular driver out there and giving it his best, giving it his all. It's unfortunate he couldn't be at the track or in the car. He had to go home. He watched the race with Mr. H, apparently. He did come out and said, I appreciate all the support from the fans and all the well wishes. He said, you know, like, it's just like, you know, they sometimes say minor setback for a major comeback, and let's hope that is the case. Uh, again, we don't know how long it's going to be until he comes back in the race car, um, but I have a feeling that he'll be back in the car and he'll get granted a waiver to make the playoffs especially with the you know they give waivers to anybody that misses a race and like especially if it's a medical issue and this was a medical issue now it's not a race car incident issue like Kyle Busch had back in 2015 where the day before the Daytona 500 he was running the Xfinity race and was caught up in a crash late in the race he broke his uh right tibia at the time and a few more fractures he suffered including uh, an injury to his foot during that incident and Kyle had to sit out for quite a while 11 weeks but if you remember, he came back, he won four races in the summer, he made the playoffs, and he went on to win the race and the championship at Homestead in 2015. So it's possible Chase Elliott could do this depending on when he comes back. Kyle Busch even came out and said, I reached out to Chase, I texted him saying, if there's anything you, you, like, you would like me to help you with, like any support, because I dealt with the same thing you did in 2015, I'm here for you. I know the doctors that helped me get back... Uh, to the car with this quick speedy recovery and of course i know the people and kyle predicted because he suffered more you know damage to his right leg than chase did in his snowboarding incident and kyle predicted that chase could be out for at least a month i don't know if that's truly the case but if he does come back by at least a month if not the middle of april or late april kyle bush is a fortune teller but it was very nice of kyle to reach out and you know help chase any way he possibly could and we hope chase will get back in the car soon we wish him a speedy recovery as for who was in the car this weekend it was xfinity driver josh barry from junior motorsports he got in the car qualified 32nd and uh, obviously he was never ever a contender the entire race he was just learning because he's never driven this next gen car before he kept it clean despite a scrape of the wall off of turn number two but they were able to get the car home to the finish 29th place two laps down or 27th place he felt like he learned some things but, you know, is it going to keep him in the car for a while until Chase comes back? We'll see. Hendrick will have a decision to make about who drives the nine car at Phoenix. But I, I do 
think Chase kind of was stung by the way he saw those Hendrick cars drive Sunday. If he didn't have this leg injury, he could have been up there with his teammates. He could have been. But uh, we wish Chase again a speedy recovery. We wish you the well. He started physical therapy today, actually. We hope to have him back in the car uh, when his um, tibia begins to heal up and uh, he feels comfortable enough to get back in the race car. We hope to have him back, and hopefully when he comes back, he can uh, win some races and uh, make the playoffs and hopefully make a championship run. So that's it for Las Vegas. Next weekend, we're off to the desert in Phoenix. And in this race, it's not only a test for everyone to see what they've got, depending on what happens when we come back here in the fall and who could be in the championship four. It's another important race this weekend because we are debuting a brand new aero package this week for like low downforce at these shorter tracks. So NASCAR announced that they are introducing a short track package for the tracks that are shorter than one mile. Now, that does not include Bristol or Dover. It includes tracks like Phoenix, Martinsville, because... Let's face it, last year, the Martinsville races were not Martinsville races we've been known to watch over the years or really since the track, you know, became part of the sport. This package is shortened the spoiler from four inches to two inches, and it's kind of like, you know, reducing the downforce by 30% on the cars as well as doing some things at the back with the diffuser. We hope to make this for some good competitive racing because last year, driver said, the cars on the short tracks handled too well that we weren't able to put on a show. We want to, you know, manhandle the cars and we want to see some side-by-side -side action. Let's hope with this package, with this car this weekend, that we can put on a good show for the fans. And it could also, you know, put together what could hopefully be a great championship battle when we get back here in November. But it's a big win weekend for these guys coming up in the last race of the West Coast Swing to run well at Phoenix in preparation for what could be a big weekend before we come back here in november so who come out top will alex bowman win at his home track will hendrick and chevrolet continue this dominance they've won the first three races of the season will byron continue off his dominance at las vegas to phoenix or will somebody else like the cactus king calvin harvick in his final year get the victory we shall see so i hope you all have a wonderful rest of your week subscribe like congratulations to william byron and the 24 team and their win and we wish once again a safe and speedy recovery to chase elliott thank you so much for watching everybody have a wonderful week let's go racing